popping. So today we are going to talk about internships. Yes, we talk about this all the time, but I love talking about it. So today we are going to talk about what are the top 10 software engineering internships you can get. Now, top internship is really subjective. You know, some people like, for example, Apple over Google, some people like Google over Apple. So you don't really know, it's kind of subjective. And also there's a lot of things to consider like salary, uh, benefits, uh, prestige. You know, some people talk about the respect. Japan is all about the respect. And then how much you'll learn, and then also the team, and also the technology that they use. Some people care about that, some people don't, so, you know. So it's kind of hard to consolidate all these together and come up with a good answer. Until now. So there's this guy in Waterloo that scraped LinkedIn. You know, scraped the whole website, looked at all you Waterloo students, and basically what he did is he looked at every single student and their history of internships that they did. Now, Waterloo makes you do six internships. So basically, he made an assumption that your last internship is better than your before last internship. So for example, if their first internship was Google and then their next internship was Apple, he would deem Apple better than Google. Now that's just one person. So he did that with everyone. You know, he did that with every single U Waterloo kid and basically gave an ELO score to every one of these companies. So now I'm just gonna use this website and I'm going to sort it by this ELO score. Before I go into the top 10, let me just show you what this site is all about. Uh, this, I think the site is kind of down now and I kind of just kept a copy for myself. So, so here's what it looks like. As you can see, every row is a person. So if you search Citadel, uh, you know, you see that this guy went to Clearbridge Associate, then TD Securities, then Citadel. So that means Citadel would be better than all these companies. And then Code Connect would be better than Citadel. Oh, that's me. That's actually me. Uh, I guess the data wasn't very um, updated. And <laughs> I could clearly say that Citadel is better than Scotiabank by far. Anyway, so this is what it looks like. And then when you aggregate all of this, you get this with ELO. Uh, I don't know why we can't sort. I mean, usually you can sort, but I think it's because the person didn't, they probably didn't do the, they probably didn't scrape the JavaScript. So I have like an old version. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy all that. And like, as a true data scientist, I'm just gonna use Excel. You know, I was thinking like maybe parsing it or something, but screw that, I'm just gonna use Excel because it seems like it's well formatted. So, all right, company name, copy. Open up Excel and voila. Okay, cool. And then put a filter here, filter, and then sort, descending. So I'm not gonna tell you which company is first yet, so I'm gonna blur it out here. I'm just gonna blur the top 10. And as you can see, okay, maybe I'll start from the bottom, you know, so you guys, no spoilers. So, you know, for example, EA is ranked number 24 you got Square, number 22, and then Bloomberg, 21. You could see it's sorted by their ELO score. Yeah, and then, okay, I'm gonna blur out the top. Ooh, the top 10, makes a lot of sense. All right, let's start. Number 10, we have Microsoft. <laughs> you still working for Microsoft? So, you still working for Microsoft? So yeah, uh, Microsoft is still pretty good then, you know, as uh, not bad. Uh, not gonna lie, Microsoft is a pretty good company. It's just that <laughs> for me or for my some of my friends, we just like to joke around that Microsoft is like a eh company, it's like a low tier company, but it's not. Microsoft is a great company. The only reason we do that is because we had to make fun of one company and Microsoft is so big such that if I make fun of them, they wouldn't care because I'm so small. But yeah, this is great because uh, I'm able to talk about Microsoft. Okay, so Microsoft, <laughs> is known to have pretty easy interviews. Uh, I have done their interview for software engineering and for program manager. And I would like to say that their software engineering interview was pretty easy, I passed in one shot. So, so the software engineering interview is quite simple. For me at least, they came to Waterloo and I had two interviews back to back and then after those two interviews, they'll say you get the internship or not. 
So the first question I got was a little bit of a design question with like databases or like infrastructure. Basically what they're saying is that, you know, if you send a certain message to a certain server and they have to send it back and stuff like that, but what if, if like those messages get lost, what would you do for fault tolerance and stuff like that? So a little bit of a design question. And then the second question is super easy linked list question. It's stuff like, uh, can you find out if the linked list has a loop or something like that? And then is there another way you can do it? I'm not gonna go over details, but basically it's two questions. All right, second thing I wanna talk about is the salary. Um, for me, I think the salary for me was like $7,000 a month, and then you get sick housing. Uh, Actually, housing is kind of a gamble. Sometimes you might get better housing, sometimes not, because they just put interns everywhere. For me, I was able to go into like a hotel. I think it was like the Hyatt Hotel. And it was pretty dope because you got maid service every single day. So yes, yeah, so the benefits were pretty good. All right, let me double check the salary real quick. Microsoft, yeah. So Microsoft is $7.2,000 per month. And then they give you $1.3,000 for housing or you choose their corporate housing. Obviously choose the corporate housing because it's way better. But uh, yeah, 7.2 thousand, that's, that's not bad, that's not bad. Um, yeah, I'll show you at the end the list, like the salary list and later on, but I don't wanna, you gotta stay through this whole video, just check it out. All right, cool, on to the next one. On the list, number nine, it is Yelp. I had an interview with Yelp for software engineering and their interview, I would rate it a bit harder than Microsoft. You know, I passed in one shot too, but they had a lot of interviews. Okay, I think on-site, I had two on-site interviews and then two phone interviews later to confirm that I wasn't, you know, just lucky. And very standard interview questions. And then uh, they also look at your projects a little bit. So I think what I showed them is I showed them a project that you could uh, sync watching YouTube together. They were pretty impressed by that. And then a lot of like normal questions, normal like uh, algorithm questions that you would get on lead code. So then the phone screen is also just coding. You know, you go on CodePad, they ask you a question and then you code it. So I think their interview process is a little bit harder and they don't accept like that many people. All right, let's talk about the salary. So Yelp is $7.6,000 per month plus $1.5,000 for housing. If you don't do corporate housing. That is pretty good. I think Yelp is, Yelp is usually higher than like Google and Microsoft because they're a little bit smaller, so they have to stay competitive by giving you more money. So yeah, so the salary is pretty damn good. And then prestige, um, yeah, I think Yelp is pretty much mid tier. Like, okay, honestly, don't don't take my words for granted, but I'm just like comparing to all the next ones that we're gonna see. But Yelp, Yelp is like not like super high tier, but it's also not like super low tier. It's kind of like with Microsoft, same level as Microsoft in terms of like prestige and in terms of how much respect you're gonna get. Next company is Pinterest. Uh, to be honest, I don't know why this isn't higher. Uh, it might be just variance to be honest because there aren't that many people that got into Pinterest because the total number of students that got there or like at least scraped it was only seven. I do think that uh, <laughs> Pinterest is pretty high up there because um, I heard from a lot of people uh, Pinterest is like one of the smartest companies like every time you go to Pinterest people say like wow I've worked with like the smartest people so yeah I think Pinterest should be a little bit higher up it might be just variance like I said um, okay let's check Pinterest Ooh. so how hard is the interview uh, I don't know I actually don't have a because I've never interviewed with Pinterest so I wouldn't know so I can't tell you that okay and then how good the salary is. Ooh. All right, you ready? The salary is $9,000 a month and then $3,000 for housing. So that makes it like $12,000 a month. Isn't that crazy? So yeah, so definitely because of the salary, people do wanna work at Pinterest. All right, next company I have here, Infusion. Hmm, I'm actually not familiar with this company, let me Google it real quick. Or maybe it is a really good company, I don't know. But I, I don't have, I mean, if you guys know, please comment below if you know Infusion and what their reputation is. But I don't quite know. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of other good companies that didn't make the list. Uh, I'll give you some spoilers. Amazon did not make the top 10. LinkedIn did not make the top 10. Square did not make the top 10. But they're all super good companies. It's possible that a lot of smart people, they got into these companies and then they just got bored. So they want to work for startups and then it'll decrease their ELO. That's just how it works. But yeah, all right. Company number six. Ooh, speaking of Amazon, 
I wonder if you can guess which one this is. So company number six, it is A9.com. So in case you guys don't know what A9.com is, subsidiary of Amazon. A9, I think it's more like the research focused part, the more data driven part. So I think they do like a lot of the search functionality of Amazon and all the hard stuff, the hard problems. So I had an interview of A9, actually twice actually, and I got rejected twice. So the first time, um, yeah, not gonna lie, I think it was pretty hard. Um, I don't remember what the question was, but I think it was related to dynamic programming. And I think it took me some time to write it. And then they also have like a design question. Uh, I think it's like something related to like either horizontally scaling or vertically scaling. I think it was like a distributed question, but basically I didn't do so well. And then the second time I got the same interviewer and I think I did well because like it was the same question, but they still didn't take me. So I think it's because I was being a dick. I was like, yeah, I was there before. Yeah, whatever, you know, I, I think I think they just didn't like me. So. So how good is the salary? Let me check. Oh, well then again, I wouldn't know because I didn't get the job. So, but let's look at Amazon. So Amazon give you $7.6 thousand dollars a month and $2.5 thousand dollars. So that's pretty average. So I guess it's average, uh, average salary. I don't think it would be much different from Amazon. So I think that's, mm, that's a good estimate of what A9 interns would get, 7.6 thousand. Okay, and then in terms of prestige, it's kind of similar to like, it's like Yelp and it's like above Yelp and Microsoft, definitely, definitely below Pinterest. So I think that's a prestige level, especially in Waterloo. Like it's pretty good, but it's not like, whoa. Oh, number five, Google, classic Google. I mean, everyone loves to work at Google. A lot of like really smart people can get to Google early on but they also like to come back to Google at the end because the company is so big, you could choose which team to go in. Some people like to work for a very specific team at Google. Some people, sometimes if you're not like super great at programming or you're not like a prodigy, but you can still get to Google because they're so big such that they accept a lot of interns. So prestige level, I would say pretty high, you know, uh, but nowadays it's getting more and more easy to get into Google and uh, so I think that's why their value is decreasing in terms of like Waterloo internships. So the interview varies a lot. So it really depends who your interviewer is. I personally never gone to Google. Um, I, yeah, I did, I, I did a few interviews. I choked. Not a lot of like dynamic programming questions or anything. Some of them can be simple. I heard some of them can be hard. It really depends. So a lot of variance there. Now the salary is pretty shit <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I think the reason they can do that is because everyone loves Google. So they pay you $6.6,000 per month and then maybe $3,000 for housing per month. So that makes it maybe 9.6,000. But yeah, their base salary isn't that great because it's only 6.6,000. So yeah, and then uh, my friends who worked at Google, they said it was pretty chill. Uh, to be honest, they, they don't work you that hard and even once you're full time, uh, if you don't want to, you could go in teams that don't work really, really hard. And uh, but Google is really good to work there because later on, you know, you have a super comfortable life. Company number four, Facebook. Facebook, oh, Facebook. So yeah, I've never worked as a software engineer at Facebook. Can I even say that? My friends who worked at Facebook said they loved it. You know, they have a great campus, beautiful campus, uh, lots of prestige. Mm, kind of, yeah, but it's getting bigger. <laughs> and once a company gets bigger, obviously they lose prestige and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so the salary for Facebook interns for software engineering is $8,000 and $1,000 for housing. So in total, $9,000. I'm surprised actually, that's quite, that's quite low for housing. And then Facebook is really good because when you come back as a returning intern, if you do really well, you get more stocks and like bonus and stuff like that. So on average, according to this chart, is like $107,000 uh, salary. You get about $37,500 of stocks per year. And then your bonus can vary from $75,000 to $100,000 in bonus. That, that means your first year, you just boom, $100,000 right in your bank account. So yeah, so that puts Facebook on number four. And then number three, is Twitter. All right, so Twitter is number three. Twitter is 
Ooh, surprisingly not that high in terms of salary. But I'll talk about that later. How hard is the interview? I remember interviewing for Twitter for software engineering or data science, I don't remember. And I had a phone screen. And with that phone screen, I failed. So I'm guessing Twitter is pretty hard, <laughs> you know, because I failed the phone screen. But but then again, you know, maybe I just suck. So, but according to other people, I think Twitter is, is also pretty average. Um, I don't see a lot of people getting into Twitter, so I think Twitter is pretty like pretty difficult in terms of like the interview. Not super super hard, but also not you know not super easy. But yeah, so that's how hard the interview is. So I can't really tell you anything about that. Uh, the phone screen that I had was a dynamic programming question that I screwed up. How good is the salary? The salary is pretty shit actually. It's six point five thousand dollars per month, and they give you two thousand dollars for housing, or maybe they have corporate housing. I'm not sure. Yeah, and then prestige. I think it's, I think it's pretty up there. Um, I mean, for some reason they're losing popularity nowadays. I mean, also this list is kind of old, but yeah, Twitter is losing popularity, so mm, maybe not that much. All right, number two. Okay, so I realized I've been doing this wrong. This should be number one. So I started at number 10, but I realized my Excel sheet, it starts at one, but then the first row of my Excel sheet, it says company name. <laughs> so that means I, I included the header. But okay, so for the number one company, I will choose. I will choose one company out of all of these. And then, yeah, so it's basically Joma's first company. All right, anyways, so number two company is Palantir Technologies. Oh, I, I think Palantir is actually the coolest company because I've tried so many times getting into Palantir and I still haven't gotten in yet. So the first time I had an interview was when I was, uh, when I was freshman year actually. I got really lucky because like, I talked to this guy and he just gave a talk about Palantir and he was from Montreal and I was like, oh me too, I'm from Montreal. And then you know he was nice enough to give me an interview. And then <laughs> I got the phone screen. The phone screen was actually pretty hard. It was, um, well, I don't know, at least I think it was pretty hard. It was like print a binary search tree in order or something like that, or like left to right. And then I was like, oh, easy. I wrote the recursion. And then he's like, all right, now do it without recursion. I'm like, Nani. And then, yeah, so basically you had to, you know, you, you just had to make a stack, kind of, like a, kind of like a recursion stack, but basically you just had to make a stack. You had to loop it in and then you pop the stack until there's no more things to pop. Um, you could search binary search tree in order traversal uh, without recursion and you'll find it. And that's exactly what I did. So it was a phone screen, right? And then what I did was um, I secretly Googled the answer and went to the Wikipedia page and saw the Psugoro code. And then I just looked at it and said, oh wait, I think I understand. And I just wrote the code perfectly for them. Yeah. so. That's that, and then that's how I got past it. But then after that, I went on site, and then the guy talked to me, he looked at my resume, he's like, how the fuck did this guy get in? And then he asked me like a design question, and yeah, I, I just screwed up, because I didn't know anything back then, I was just a kid. So I didn't know anything about infrastructure, I only knew about algorithms. So yeah, so I got killed. Hmm, okay, it's not that great. So yeah, the salary is $7.5,000 per month, flat. That's it. And then you have to pay for your own housing and stuff like that. So it's not the best. I think this company has a lot of prestige, especially back then. Everyone was wearing these like dope ass black sweaters by Palantir and everyone felt really cool working there. Not gonna lie. It was a little bit cultish according to some of my friends, but in a good way. So yeah, and I remember um, people telling me that their food was amazing. They have like salmon, you know, like a really nice grilled salmon. They have like really good chefs to make food. They have massages you know, at their campus. So yeah, so they usually have things like forward deployed engineers and normal software engineers and stuff like that. Forward deploy is pretty cool because it means you get to travel and you, met, you, you, get to, you get to talk with clients and then, you know, fix their shit or whatever. But yeah, it's a really cool company and makes you feel really badass because they're like gods with data. That's basically what Palantir is. Oh yeah, for those who don't know, Palantir Technology is basically like a data consulting company. Like, they don't say they're a consulting company, they say they're a technology company, but in the end, I think they're a consulting company. What they do is like, they help the government like track down Osama Bin Laden. They help, um, they help like some, some government stuff to like track down diseases and stuff like that. They probably like do a lot of sketchy stuff that we don't know about because they're like, they're just really good with data. They help hospitals and stuff like that for, for, processing and analyzing their data. What else? Something more interesting. 
oh, they help a lot of hedge funds and banks do some financial stuff that we can't talk about because they're so secretive. All right, so number one, <laughs> according to my spreadsheet, it's company name. Yeah. All right, let me just look at the one that pays the most. I'll say that they're number one. Hmm. Okay, there's a lot. Wait, where's Jane Street? I don't know, no, Jane Street is not here, wait. Mm, yeah, I don't know, okay. So Jane Street should be here, but I guess it's not anymore. But you could kind of know where I'm going with this. Okay, anyways, I'll just choose this one. Well, I don't really want to choose it because my brother worked there and I don't want him to feel proud of him. <sighs> okay, fuck it, I'll just choose it. All right, so the number one company is Two Sigma. Um, for you guys who don't know, Two Sigma is a hedge fund. It's, uh, it's a very quantitative based hedge fund, meaning they use a lot of tech and they use a lot of numbers to kind of like decide on what stocks to trade or what commodities to trade and stuff like that. So they're known to be pretty techy. They don't like the finance kind of vibe or like finance culture. Uh, people are not like jocks there. People are like pretty cool. Like it basically looks like, it looks like a typical tech company when I went there and visited. So the reason why I chose this is because the pretty high salary, it's $10.4,000 a month. And then they give you $5,000 for relocation. And then they give you $5,000 per month for housing. What the fuck? Holy shit, that's crazy. That's more than how much I make as a full-time. Ah, oh, fuck. But yeah. And the bonuses, I heard they're crazy. Like once you work there full-time, bonuses are amazing. And uh, yeah, you wouldn't believe it. So basically all these finance companies should be here. Uh, in case you guys don't know, it's not fintech because fintech means a uh, technology company that is about financial products. Like they help you, you know, manage your portfolio, blah, blah, blah. That's not it. They use tech so that they can, uh, so that they can grab a shit ton of data and then just make a lot of money in the stock market or whatever that they trade. So it's totally different than fintech technologies. Like you can't compare it to like, like Robin Hood, you know, it's not the same thing. But yeah, so Two Sigma, Citadel, Jane Street, um, like um, Siskahana, S-I-Q, no, that's not. Siskahana, uh, Renaissance Technology. Actually, we can't talk about Renaissance Technology because that's just at another level. So we, that's just like, we don't understand what they do. But yeah, so all of these are really, really good hedge funds and they probably pay the most compared to like other tech companies. So yeah. All right, so now let me talk about um, oh wait, so yeah, so Two Sigma, Prestige, hella high. It's funny because it wasn't that high before. When my brother started, I remember me telling my friends like, oh, my brother works at Two Sigma. They're like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, oh, it's a finance company. He's like, oh, finance, <laughs> is it a banker or something? I'm like, no, it's not a banker, he's a quantitative researcher. But anyways, Two Sigma was not really popular, but nowadays, because of the emergence of all these uh, finance companies, and then they realize like, holy shit, they pay a lot it got the uh, attention of the software engineers. So, so yeah, so now Prestige, definitely high Prestige. Uh, people love Two Sigma. They think it's, they think it's like the best thing since sliced bread. So yeah, pretty good. All right, and interview is probably super hard if it's the same or if it's similar to the full-time interview. A lot of probability questions, a lot of quantitative questions, a lot of statistics questions, a lot of brain teasers, lots of hard CS questions. I mean, I don't know. I never got an interview from them, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, that's what I heard. Um, there were a lot of companies that did not make the top 10 list. Don't know why. Probably because we just don't have that much data. Um, like I said, this, this set is not super, super good because it's still kind of hacky. But let me tell you a few companies that I think deserves, you know, to share the number one spot. One of them is Snapchat, of course. Come on, Snapchat is great. Snapchat is such a great company. It's also in LA, so that's pretty dope. They have a New York office too. They pay $10,000 a month, so I think Snapchat is really good. Cora, Cora is extremely hard to get in. Really smart people. They pay $8,300 a month. And then let's see, Twitch. Twitch is super fun. You know, you get to you get to watch people play games all day, <laughs> and then they pay you $7,400 a month. And then Airbnb. Airbnb is really good too. They pay $7,000 a month plus corporate housing, and they give you some Airbnb credit. Super cool, and they're dog friendly. Uh, one of my friends, yeah, m one of my friends interned there, and he got to bring his dog every day. Let's see, oh, Stripe is really good. 
Stripe is really good, $7,000 a month, plus corporate housing. Definitely a good company. It's about payments. Let's see. Dropbox, of course. Dropbox is really good. I'm surprised their, their salary is so low, $6,300,000 per month, plus $5,000 housing. Well, I guess the $5,000 housing is pretty good, or corporate housing, but I don't think any corporate housing would be $5,000. Maybe that's total, I'm not sure. So yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think these companies are definitely really, really good. So if ever you have the opportunities to to work there, <laughs> definitely do it. And yeah, if ever you guys are you know inundated by offers from all these companies and you find it really, really hard to choose, well, I'm going to link you guys the salary for all of these internships and also the site that gives you like the ELO. And then you could kind of compare and see which one's better than which. Well, so yeah, I hope that was interesting for you guys. I hope that was useful and uh, happy job hunting. Just remember, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and then also follow me on Instagram at Jomalpa or any other social media site, you know, whatever. Anyways, peace out and see you tomorrow. No, you're probably not gonna see me tomorrow. Not gonna make a video tomorrow. Peace.